Tom here from Lauren Systems. We're gonna talk about PFSense versus Untangle and which one you might want to get. Now I've done comparisons before. I've done videos on both of these products. These are both products we've used. And no, I don't have the time necessarily to review your favorite firewall. So I know this question is gonna come up and people always ask right away, can you review, insert name of firewall and talk about that one. I'm talking about the ones that we actively deploy and use because well, it's better than a review of I opened I tested it, it worked. This is, we actually deployed these at clients and I can tell you how they performed type of review and type of information I'm gonna give here. Before we dive into which one you should choose, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And I wanna start with my features chart that I made earlier this year comparing a handful of different firewalls. And yes, corrections have been made because there was a policy about the L2TP VPN um, and I didn't realize it had support. I had got that wrong and I updated it. The chart matches, the video has me saying a, one of these firewalls doesn't support it. And I don't remember which one it was, um, but I'll leave a link to that video. Anyways, the operating system that each of these is based on, and we're only gonna focus on the uh, NetGate PF sensor on Tingle. Unfortunately, I, I've done videos on this. We just don't use anymore really any of the USGs, UDMs um, for people who need anything more than basic routing. Uh, watch that video and watch, I'll leave a link to the video where I discuss some of the shortcomings of the USG, including the lack of ability to put multiple WAN IPs on there that still exists right now in October of 2020. They still have not gotten around to updating that request from, I don't know, four or five years ago. So we're going to focus on NetGate versus Untangle or PF Sense versus Untangle. And I bring up NetGate because it's an interesting way this works. So PF Sense is 100% open source. That's at least the very first thing that's going to be different. Despite someone in the comments that'll get their caps lock on that told me that PF Sense doesn't feel open source even though they give you the source code, they are legit an open source project no matter what your misgivings are about the company NetGate. And NetGate is the hardware provider and the support team for the PF Sense system. So even though it's open source, the business model is selling some hardware and offering support in that for the PF Sense product via the NetGate company. So they do give away 100% of the source code. You can have all of it. And that's this product right here. This is uh, specifically, if you're wondering which one this is, a review of it. This is the SG2100. Now, Untangle is also based on open source, but you can't have 100% of every feature open source and free. Untangle has licensing fees attached to it. And that sometimes is enough difference where people have stopped watching and going, all right, that's it. I don't want something that has any recurring license fees. But Untangle, look, I'll leave a link to my recent review of it. They do have a free version, which does not have every feature that Untangle offers. And I break that down and they have links on their website where they tell you what you get for free and what you get for description. And they also have hardware appliances. And I'm going to be reviewing this one soon, which is uh, one of the Untangle E-Series firewalls that has the Wi-Fi built in. So they both offer, if you're not interested in trying to roll your own hardware, because they both support that, or you can just load this on your own hardware, and you want to just buy something turnkey from either company, you can do that, or you can load the software on either company. And license fees still apply over at Untangle. Um, and well, the NetGate's open source, NetGate slash PFSense, PFSense project specifically is fully open source. Therefore, you can just download and load it. Now let's run down the features. FreeBSD versus Linux. That means that you're going to have a difference in hardware support. So that's something to think about. Uh, FreeBSD is a really, really secure and solid operating system, and so is Linux. But there is definitely a difference in 
hardware support. Now, it's not that hard to find network cards to support FreeBSD, but it's worth noting that there's probably a broader range of hardware support you'll find in Linux, and BSD is still really solid, but it's just of note. And anytime you're building a firewall, it's not that hard. I've talked about this before, finding these, especially if you're going used, finding these Intel cards that are well supported in BSD. And obviously in Linux, like I said, it's a little bit more flexible. Centralized management. No, there's not a centralized management offering from PFSense or NetGate. Untangle, yes, they have an entire dashboard that this can tie into, but that's part of you know the services you can get from Untangle and you're tying into their dashboard. It's not like something you can host yourself, uh, but it does have that ability to do that for management and for reselling purposes and for license management, it ties into the dashboard because obviously it's got to contact a licensing server for the extra features. They both have open VPN servers and client options, IPsec, L2, TP, VPN, policy routing, and this is where the nuances start coming in. While I can run down and say yes to the features, let's do a little bit of explaining. When it comes to the policy routing, it is a little bit more complex. This is why I have so many videos on PFSense. It is capable of doing some really advanced tinkering and policy routing, but that means it's also a little bit more complex to do. And if you're into network engineering, it's generally a more favorable thing because people who, like myself, have been doing network engineering for a long time, really love all the options and bells and whistles and don't mind the complexity because, well, we've been doing it for a long time. For policy routing on an Untangle, they got some really simple one-click options for like tunneling a VPN out a certain uh, tunnel traffic. There's really some simple things you can do in Untangle with a couple checkboxes and not having to understand everything and it does it behind the scenes. So while they both support it, I won't lie, it's going to be way easier on Tangle. Intrusion detection, Sericata or Snort, they kind of blend this in in Untangle. You just get Sericata, but it's also kind of pretty interface on top versus very detailed. All the buttons are able to be clicked and very fine-tuned. You can still do that a lot in Untangle, um, and, but some people like the fact that they've simplified it versus it is going to be more complicated. That's why I have a much longer video on how to do it on PFSense versus Untangle. GUIP filtering. Um, this is an add-on inside of PFSense for GOIP and DNS filtering with PF Blocker, and yes, they have it in Untangle. It's part of just built-in modules. Web content filtering, another add-on. Squid versus, yes, they have entire web filtering, part of their license package. Advanced traffic shaping, yes, they have that. WAN failover, um, not part of the free version, which I find kind of odd, but if you want WAN failover, uh, that is an option that they have over on Untangle. Load balancing, yes, back to the paid integration. Also, Active Directory. Well, I said no, but I know someone's going to hammer out that, well, you can have it talk to LDAP that can talk to Active Directory or some of the other ways, like loading a Radius server on a Windows machine that can then bridge the gap. So no direct integration is why I said no right here. Um, Untangle, yes, direct integration with their directory integrator tool. Once again, part of the paid services, but hey, it's a feature that they have in there. Both have Captive Portal. Let's Encrypt Certificates is something unique to, not unique to only, but definitely a feature that's welcome over at PFSense. And HA Proxy, I've done videos on combining these two because, well, while you can run a separate proxy server, having it all in one box is really convenient because then you can put your DNS entries and make everything match and you can do a one-stop shop for having all your reverse proxies, manage your authentication against it and everything else. Now, one other thing, it's really not on this list, but this comes down to some nuance that matters a lot to people who are into network engineering, and that's aliases. And aliases or objects, uh, as you want to build them, is going to be vary from company to company, I should say, on how they may use that nomenclature. And what that means is let's take how we create an object in some of the other firewalls. And, you know, I've done this. I've worked with Cisco. I've worked with Fortigate. I've worked with a lot of different companies. And they'll have you create an object for ports. So let's say I have a server that has a group of part, ports that need to be opened up. I can create an object. That object has those ports in it. Uh, that's referred to as aliasing inside of PFSense. Now, in PFSense, though, you can also group, you know, IPs, you can group ports, you can have those ports be pulled from external URLs, which is actually really neat, and how PF Blocker works. So it's basically alias and objects is a little bit interchangeable if you're using some of the other firewalls that use the object language. And it's the same concept. I can group ports together, I can group the you know URLs together, so I can actually have actively updated feeds. So those are really cool features that are just kind of 
missing from Untangle. And it's not that there's not questions about them and there's an entire forum post I can leave a link to where people discuss that they've requested aliases and it does have some policies that allow you to group things together, but it's not quite the same. And I'll leave that link to discussion because they talk about the nuanced differences that kind of go out of scope of this video, but that is kind of a, you know, a big thing. Now the overall, which one should you choose though, is comes down to I really like PFSense here and at our office. Why? We're using HAProxy, we're using Let's Encrypt. I love all the advanced features. I love the fact that I can load the Radius server right into one device to handle the authentication, to handle everything. And someone's probably pulling their hair out screaming, going, no, those all have to be 100% separate servers for security purposes. And no, they don't, they don't have to be. If you set them up properly and configure things properly, you can have one device because if they crack one device, they usually have access to the other device because if you have authentication to your Radius server built into your firewall and someone gets into your firewall, it doesn't matter if they have access to the Radius server, they have the authentication to get into it. Um, but I'm not gonna get too out of scope on that debate. They have local directory, a local user database you can have. So you can still mostly do a lot of the same things here at Untangle, um, but they also have their directory connector, which then allows you to connect to Radius server and Active Directory and things like that. So maybe that's easier. So while I love all the features that are here, I won't lie Untangle for a lot of small businesses and especially the home users who are going, Tom, just give me the answer for a turnkey, easy, inexpensive solution. Uh, Untangle's kind of, a little bit easier for home users. Uh, the web filtering comes up quite a bit and I'm gonna do a deep dive soon into Untangle and their home user edition um, and review some of their hardware. And I wanted to do this because for people that seem daunted and a little bit scared of loading up a PFSense, I mean, I've done all these tutorials, but yes, my tutorials are fairly in depth on it because it is a more complex firewall to deploy versus Untangle's kind of a next, yes, next, yes, cool. I got the firewall, I bought a turnkey piece of hardware and I checked that box for web filtering. I bought my license fee to enable all of that. And yes, it does have a recurring license fee annually, but the home user edition is only 50 bucks a year. And people go, I just needed my kids, you know, not to wander the internet in places where I needed good reporting. And this is one of those things that's kind of nuanced as well. The reporting and untangle is definitely really, really good. And there are third party ways to export or playing with NTOP where you can get some reporting out of PFSense, but no, it's not as good. Watch my recent review of Untangle or play with any of the demos yourself. And Untangle's reporting is definitely superior to PF Census. There's no argument about that. But like being able to play with PF Top and dive into sessions, I still kind of like the way PF Sense does it. And to me, you know, forwarding, uh, packets and all the little advanced videos that I have on PFSense still make it to me something better for network engineering, but Untangle still makes it easier for the majority of end users. Now, the one last thing I'll comment on is things like transparent bridging and some of the weird one-off cases. That's something that you can really customize and I've done videos on with PFSense and Untangle, well, less or so, but then again, who's doing that? Well, it's an edge case. It's not that common. And what about the web filtering? with it not being in PFSense and someone's going to hammer out that I love Squid and I don't like Squid on PFSense. I don't find it to be the smoothest of integrations. I have uh, my reservations about any time you got to load SSL certs and do inspections because it just causes issues with many applications that don't like having extra certs installed. And it does open yourself up to potential more threats because now you've got something added to the trust of that particular system. And they both have support for doing this. It's just not my favorite way to implement it. The basic web filtering that comes with um, Untangle actually works quite well without doing any type of certificate install, which is, you know, like I said, something I do like in, in end users and home users. So hopefully this either made your decision a little bit easier and not too much harder. Um, but obviously if you're, you know, more into learning the network engineering, you're probably leaning over here to the PFSense side of the world, whether you load it yourself or buy the hardware. Um, whichever works for you. And if you're going, I'm just a home user time and um, my focus is on you know, software development, things like that, but I don't want the kids wandering the internet and I'd like to separate my networks and uh, have a solid firewall that's not some junk consumer thing. And I don't mind 50 bucks a year for a home user or even their reasonable prices for small businesses. Or if you're an IT provider and you're looking for that, you know, central dashboard management, which everyone seems upset PFSense doesn't have, then you can look over here. And the final, because someone's gonna ask this question, well, Tom, if you deploy NetGate and PFSense at your clients, how do you handle any web filtering? And I'll answer that question once again. We use a SolarWinds stack and load endpoint management. 
because firewalls are not substitutes for endpoint control and endpoint management for things like web filtering. Uh, so that is right now what we're doing in October of 2020, we're still using SolarWinds with our clients that we deploy uh, NetGate appliances on for the firewall. So just going to clarify that question because I don't think I've posted a video about firewalls where that question doesn't get asked. So I'll leave links to videos I've done on both of these products uh, and you can check them out for yourselves. Full disclosure, we are in untangle reseller and part of their partner program just fyi um, but all this was just me doing the video there's neither company gave me any input about this video i could have disclosed at the beginning but there's not really anything to disclose about that all right thanks and thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more content from the channel hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like youtube to notify you when new videos come out if you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.